Many websites offer a form for their visitors to fill in in a bid to encourage them to make contact. So open the contacts page. Right. When you place the form block onto your web page, the default setting is in its most simple format. We have name, email address, and we're the message that we're requesting them to send, along with a submit button. These are the bare minimum that any form needs. Position the top left corner approximately where you want the form to be, then you can resize it by dragging the bottom right corner around. You don't need to be precise, we can resize it properly once we've finished creating the form. If you click the pencil icon and select properties, a dialog box will appear with more options that you can add. Perhaps you'd like to know which country your visitor is from. If so, simply place a ticks in a ticks <laughs> just one tick will do. Place a tick in the box to the left of country. The box that has suddenly appeared to the right of country indicates that this information is compulsory. They cannot send the message without giving you this information. Perhaps you need some more info that isn't represented anywhere here. Well, that's easy enough. You can edit these boxes if you wish. So here, for example, you might want to say, uh, what did you have for breakfast? We'll make that an optional response by removing the tick to the right. Maybe you would like your visitors to send an attachment, a CV or a photo, for example. Other options are questions where your visitors can select an answer from a pre-published list. So this one, for example, how did you find us? Options that they've put down already are found on Google, followed a link from another site, or friend told me. It's not comprehensive, you might want to add a few more options in yourself. So let's add found on Bing and a TV advert. You might want to edit the question as well, as well as the answers that is. So um, let's type who played Mr. Bean? The answers will have a choice between Rowan Atkinson and uh, Margaret Thatcher and Jimmy Neal. If you offer a newsletter, you could ask them to tick this box, though to be honest, you'd probably be better off using um, a MailChimp or, or something such as that rather than to try and manually create a newsletter. MailChimp is a, um, a great program for you to get in, uh, familiar with. MailChimp.com You can sign up for that yourself. The text on the submit button can be changed to send, if you wish. Or you can leave it as submit, whatever takes your fancy. Now click apply. And then preview your page. Looking good. But to be honest this is about as much use as a chocolate fire guard. Everything is here. The drop down list works. I can type a message. I can browse for a file to send. The tick box works. But when I click the submit button or the save button, send button, nothing. Now, close the preview and open your properties again. 
you can double click on the form this makes it a bit clicker than clicker <laughs> a bit quicker than going through the pencil icon click email settings and you need to type in your email address that's the one that you want the form to be sent to you might as well copy and paste this into the next field as well so as though it's getting sent from that address you can either leave the next two fields as they are or you can give them a custom message if you prefer whatever leave the maximum file size to two megabytes that is enough for most purposes um, and you don't want someone playing silly beggars and clogging up your inbox if you want to use one of those prove you're a, you were a human things you know where you have to select the bridge or the storefront or whatever then you can do that by following the instructions under the settings tab and all that's left to say now is to save and publish your work oh actually no don't forget you're going to need to move things around on the other screen sizes and don't forget you must re-secure your website again 